Hello, welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. And I feel like I just ran in from outside. It's freezing outside. Oh, turn the heater off. So oh, yeah. don't forget, because that's the background noise. I think I'm Michael Mandel. Yes, I, this is Double Talk right here on the Lost Cruises channel. And welcome. And uh, as you know, we love food and drink. That's what the show is likes to be all about. And <laughs> that's you, the part we like. It's the part we like. <laughs> we don't know what you like. And as you can see, a variety of uh, cocktail type bottles in front of us. So as our producer mentioned, we had done a show on the Perfect Martini yeah, sometime back. a while ago. I mean, the Perfect Martini is not a quality thing. It's more of a scientific thing. It's not the perfect, uh, all the vodka places, all the gin places say their product makes a perfect martini. Hmm. But the actual perfect martini is more of a mathematical balance. And what it's based on is the fact that you not only use uh, white, but red vermouth. And, and so when you talk red and white vermouth, white vermouth could also be called dry vermouth, and it could also be called French vermouth. Red hmm. vermouth is uh, sweet as well as Italian vermouth. So one of the things that's good to know if you drink vermouth, you don't use it that much because it's sort of like a condiment for your other stuff. So you have yes. it for a long time. It's subtle. Yes. And, and uh, so red vermouth pretty much stays okay if you don't put it in your refrigerator. White vermouth, on the other hand, yes. this, uh, this one, I've had this for a while, as you can yeah. see. Maybe. How long a while? It looks like it's turned color a little bit. Or was that the natural color? We're going to try it out and see if it's you, really bad. So you think, you, you're, you're saying that it might have turned. I'm suggesting that. To vinegar or, or some such thing. It's not bad. It tastes sweeter than... It does taste sweeter. Than a regular yes. white it's vermouth. Actually, it's actually the Martini and Rossi Bianco. Well, that's so not bad, though, you know? It's pretty good. I'm surprised that you had me scared, Mike. <laughs> yeah, because you said... There are things you wouldn't drink. You there did are, say that before the show. There are numerous things that I just won't drink. Okay, so the perfect martini is sort of like a, a martini which has just a little bit of the vermouthy stuff. So we split the amounts of vermouth. So we'll make, ah, we'll do... A binary vermouth. Yes, two part bifurcated vermouth. And the reason this show is called the... Uh, double talk, du double vermouth. Double vermouth, yes, that's why. Uh, also, the show is called the Perfect Martini Plus. Today's show is, yes. Yes, we were in uh, the famous uh, Bennigan's. Bennigan's? What did Bennigan's turn into? Turn into Dublin's yes, Bar we were, and Grill. We were in Dublin's Bar and Grill, and uh, we know, Mark and I know, because when we did the uh, Negroni uh, show four years ago, we were looking for people who could make Negronis. And they were not one of them. And your prime requisite that no, most people don't have is Campari. Campari. And they were the first one we went into because it's near my house. A simple ingredient. And they didn't have it, so we went on. So we knew they weren't too set for drinks. And so if I go for a drink, I want something, you know, different or whatever. Anyhow, we're using Botanist Gin. Not that they sponsor the show, but it's a really, you've had, have you ever had Botanist? I'm not it's sure really if I've tried that or not. It's uh, made by a Scotch company on the island of Isla named Bunahabin. Well, bot, you know, I'm sure they need botanists to grow the juniper berries that goes into the, uh, and the wheat. They do, they the do. The wheat that goes so what they it. did to do botanist, they're trying to make scotch. They're starting up their scotch uh, oh. distillery. First thing that comes out of a scotch distillery is pure alcohol. Yeah. To make it into scotch, it has to go into barrels for three for aging. to eight years. Uh, but they have all this. <coughs> God bless you. Excuse me. We better drink quickly so we you better. can cure yourself. So they made botanist gin, which is straight stuff coming out of the distillery, and they just mix it with 22 botanicals. How many times was it distilled? Go oh, give that up. <laughs> I, I hear it makes a difference. Yes, yeah, for publicity. Um, okay, so we're doing, we're going back to this, uh, this is the extra dry Martini and Rossi white vermouth. So you do a 50-50 on the two vermouths, is that correct? Yes, but I'm not gonna do much, because as Mark can tell you, every drink that has any scotch, uh, any, not scotch, but gin or vodka in it, in New Mexico is already a martini. Tell them why. Oh, Michael, must I tell the story yes, again? Yes, you do, because people haven't seen this for ages. Yet. That's true. You know, the driest martini in the world can be made right here in, actually anywhere in the world because. Probably now. Because when they set the atomic bomb off, just north, you know, outside of Alamogordo, on this, just north of Alamogordo city limits, uh, the scientists 
put a bottle of vermouth up on the tower right next to the bomb. So when the bomb exploded, it vaporized the vermouth into the atmosphere. So now all you have to do if you want a really dry martini, you hold your glass up like this. You have to be outdoors. Hold yes, it outside. It, it gets the, the, the atomized vermouth that's in the atmosphere, and then you add your gin to it. And there you got it. That's the driest martini in the world. You know, when you say you said it without thinking that you add your gin to it, vodka martinis got very popular and are perhaps more popular yes. than gin martinis. Don't put uh, that all the way back. We have to do this okay. again for the second. So second half of the show, we're going to do the perfect martini with Cointreau in it because when we were over at Dublin's, I asked them to make this drink and they sort of uh, screwed it up. So I said, throw some Cointreau in it and they did and it came out really good. And then for my second one, the bartender already knew and he balanced it because the first time they didn't put enough red vermouth. This time it came out really good. So. Well, it's amazing how many bars in town are not b big into cocktails. People don't drink cocktails. They people sell don't beer. People like uh, beer, and if they drink wine, many wine drinkers don't even bother with cocktails. Unlike us, we'll drink anything. Uh, well, you have wine with dinner, cocktails before dinner, Ooh. maybe after. This looks a little yellow. Maybe well, that's, that's the, the red vermouth, isn't it? Yes. And, and you like martinis, right? You're I, a mar I love a good martini. In fact, one of my favorite uh, drinks. Last show you were complaining because we weren't doing martinis. <laughs> That's right. As far as I'm concerned, we can do a martini every day. Sounds good to me. Okay. If you do it right, let's see That's how this right. is. Not bad. Don't you think it needs a little Cointreau? There, I can't. It's got the. It's got an average taste to it. What is that? Is that this? No, I think it's. I think it's uh, this. You know, that would be it. I, we should have used that one. <laughs> that one's sweeter. You want a little bit of that in? No, I don't want it now. I don't. Yeah, think. yeah, we'll do it now. Okay, yeah. Wait, you got less. We'll see oh, how you, it works. You drank half your drink already. There we go. Now, I got to use this up anyway, right? Mm -hmm. I think that helps it. See, you never know. <laughs> I'm not blaming Dublin's for not making the perfect martini. So, hey, if you want an interesting martini, use old, <laughs> old white vermouth. Oh, I don't think that helps. Hmm? No. Uh, Doesn't bother me. <laughs> so. Oh, we have, we're going to do the second martini at the second half of the show. Yeah. Where we do all three, the two vermouths and the Cointreau. Yeah, now, there's a new cafe in town. We, we love to talk about new restaurants. Except, you use that loosely. Well, it's a newly named cafe with the new owner. The new owner, Zia Cafe, on South Valley Drive, and that was the name of Zia. It used to be called the Old Town Cafe, and it was there for 30 plus years at least. And um, it was a good place. It's one of the few restaurants a good in standard. town that has a counter that you can sit at. Um, it's an old restaurant. I hope they, they refurbish it a little bit, maybe some new paint. You think? New tiles, new seats, new they have, whatever. They have American fare as You'll well find as out, Mexican right? food as well. And uh, so I'm looking forward to going to it and trying it out. And oh. I will report back. Although Algernon has reported, right? He did an article in the paper. But you know, it's a diner. They're not going to, uh, like, uh, no. uh, and it, the best thing they could do is be good. It should aspire to be more than that, although he said he, he's going to attempt to get beer and wine. Everybody For must breakfast? think that's going to be... He doesn't do dinner. He only does breakfast and lunch. Well, he gets a lot of truckers. No, he doesn't. Well, he gets a lot of people who drive around in trucks. <laughs> Pickup trucks. Yes, yeah. and they could use a good hit. You know, you could do a Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary is healthy. That's true. Because the amount of tomato juice and or V8 you put in it is equal to two servings of vegetables. But he's not going to get a full liquor license, just beer and wine. And which means he really needs to be open for dinner if you're going to have beer and wine, right? <sighs> well, you know, that's what uh, uh, Spirit Winds is thinking about doing. How, how are you going to They're supposed license? to do it too. Well, yeah. a liquor license for local stuff. It's cheaper. Ooh, local stuff, local beer, local wine. We have everything you want. They haven't passed that yet, have they? No, they haven't passed The city passed has not that. passed that. Maybe everybody's waiting for that. But the guy from Spirit Winds, the guy who bought it from Richard Parra. Yes. He's uh, going to be open later for dinner and once he gets his beer and wine license. I say that with a, a little sneer because huh? we don't know. I mean, this town has always been so Utah-ian. You know, the Utah, like Utah. The Utah has yeah. some of the worst drinking laws in, in the world. They just, who's the one that just lowered their drinking laws they to did. 0.02? They point did. The 02. DWI, not 0.025, done to 5. No, no, 0.02. D 
Is it five? Oh, five point five. It's eight yeah. everywhere else. Yeah. It used to be fourteen everywhere. They all lowered it down to eight, mm -hmm. and now Utah's lowered their down down to point five. You know, you get point five of alcohol when you eat breakfast cereal because it's made with grain, Ooh. and that ferments it when you get in your stomach. It makes alcohol. Mm -hmm. We always have some amount of alcohol in our bloodstream. Well, there was a little residual, yeah. I guess, going on We there. make our own alcohol. You think your stomach is just busy regurgitating stuff just to uh, squeeze it out? No, man, it's making alcohol. Well, now, you I can to... prove that. No, you can't. Oh, okay. Now, you, went, you said you went to Carl's Jr. the other day and they had their, yes. their new plant-based burger. I did. That's called a veggie burger, Michael. They're 10 years behind the time. Theoretically, it is. It's, and you can buy the Beyond Meat burgers at virtually every place in town. Albertsons apparently has it. Uh, uh, natural grocers. I was the person I was with and talking about this. They looked. At, oh, Seal Herman. She looked up because she couldn't wait to get this. She's supposed to have, you know, low cholesterol. There is no cholesterol in the Beyond Burger. Anyway, uh, Sprouts has it. Natural grocers has it. Every Albertsons. I probably Albertsons. Where do you find it in Albertsons? I have no idea, but every Albertsons she found it listed. If you go to the Beyond Meat. Counter? Uh, website. <laughs> no, website. You'll see all the places they, they have it. Anyway, with Carl's Jr., of course, you get all this marvelous uh, stuff like a tomato. Tomatoes, lettuce, and onion. Lettuce and other stuff. And cheese. it was fun and cheese. And expensive. And no, you can get a two-for-one coupon virtually anywhere. Please. And that makes it two-for-one. If one of those things, which is uh, $5.95, you get two-for-one. Where do you get the coupons? They come in the mail. Oh, really? Or maybe they're in the paper. You get the paper. I get the paper. Yes. They're either in Sunday paper or the mail. The coupons are all over. And they're probably on your, if you go to the Carl's Jr. website, you could probably get them. Ah. They're, you know, anybody who does coupons is doing it to draw people sure. in. Sure. So that's the point of it. Maybe I'll have to try it. You'll have to. Or you can go to one of those uh, uh, stores and buy your own Beyond Meat. Then you don't know the Carl's special touch, <laughs> which is something like ketchup. Oh, uh, well, yes. It's only it's a matter good. of time I, before I remember, McDonald's I would say it. it's not distasteful, but I don't mind veggie burgers either, mm. and I don't mind, mind black bean burgers, which have a certain New Mexican cachet. Yes, well, there are those who just have to have meat, and that's it. Right, they but if you want that taste, it. but if you are hooked on meat and you're not supposed to have cholesterol, that Beyond Meat burger is the perfect thing. Well, that's good. Now, some people won't be able to afford it because uh, because of the government shutdown. If they work well, for the federal government, and they're and they're and they're out of work, or they're working without pay. They are working without pay. They're, they're counting their pennies now, and the shutdown affects New Mexico worse than any other state. We have a lot of government workers because there's per capita we have more federal government employees than any other uh, state. Really, my, my wife's going to get stuck. Yes, he's a federal yes. employee. And actually, almost everybody in the state works for the government. Pretty much. Not only that, city. but people get food stamps. Food stamps are supposed mm -hmm. to be extended till February. Well, that's state. Yeah, but the money comes from the feds. That's true. But you, That's why they can use their backlog of money to keep people going. Yes. I mean, imagine <clears throat> starving poor people. You know, the whole thing is ridiculous because he's trying to hurt the poor people coming up. There's not that many... The area that he wants to do a wall in, virtually nobody goes through. No, that most thing people come from the normal spaces. So if no that's reason. where they're coming through, then that's where the Border Patrol should sit and stop them when they come through. Easy enough. But, but New Mexico, uh, our great Zia state, uh, is hurt the worst. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we, have, we have two national laboratories, well, three everything. Air Force bases, yeah. White Sands, national, White Sands Mon Missile yes. Ground. We have and a national monument. We have plenty of places. The thing is, you're hurting the people of the country by, you're not really hurting the people coming in from, from uh, Mexico. Well, it because affect them at they all. They can come in, they can come in by plane, they can come, they come in through Juarez. It's not, pro, it's not a problem. No. In the area. So anyway, let's take a break. Oh, we're going to take a break? And we'll be back with more we're, we're cocktail gonna, action. Oh, I thought you meant we're getting a, a replacement president. That would be taking a break. Please don't anyway. set me up. Don't set you up? You could think about it over the intermission, which isn't ha happening because somebody fell asleep at the wheel again. Hi, no, here we go. Trevor. Yes. We're going to make another drink. I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? 
That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Celebrate, celebrate, Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, it's always a celebration. Mark Goldstein, the safe money guy, at 575-556-2472, to learn about innovative strategies now available to help you grow, protect, and preserve your money and financial future, regardless of market conditions. We're back, this is Double Talk right here on the Las Cruces channel. He's still choking <coughs> over, we just... He just tasted Bombay string by itself. That's not Bombay. Not Bombay. He likes Bombay. It's Bombay botanist. This. I prefer Bombay to this. Yes. Well, this, this Irish gin. Who ever heard of Scottish, Irish gin? Scottish, Scottish gin. Scottish gin, is it? You know, there is, a, there is an Irish gin called Dingle ah. made on the, uh, in the town of Dingle. Do they use uh, juniper berries or dingle berries? They use... <laughs> well, their I'm harvesting serious. system is non-conventional. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, remember Yvette, Yvette Harrell. She ran for Congress against Sochi uh, Torres Small. Yes. Uh, she lost by a bare minimum, um, about 3,000 votes, and she contested it. She's finally conceded that she 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 was she very lost. happy when she thought she won, and she so thought, that's over. It's over. I don't have to deal with it anymore. I can go to Congress, yes, like I, Steve Pierce. I, yes, I'm replacing Steve Pierce. And uh, Turned out so she said, ha, 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 Sochi Torres Small. And Sochi wound up winning. She's, she's in Congress. Now, Yvette is the head of the Tea Party in Alamogordo. And she has vowed to run again for Congress in, in two years. Well, in 2020. So, yeah, 2020. in 2020. For the 2020 election. Yes. We don't know when that is. And uh, so? So, let her do it. That's fine. That. It's, As she well, made it, everybody happy. She say, we'll get them when it comes around. <clears throat> if we still have a country then, we'll see. Yeah. Now, uh, there's another person running for office. Which is an interesting small office, which everybody here knows about, and it's dear to our hearts. City Councilman Greg Smith is running for mayor. He's announced this week. Uh, Greg's been on the show. He substituted for you once. Really? Maybe get him for next week. Remember, you need somebody for next week. Yes, we've been discussing that probably. Oh, good. And uh, anybody want to sit in for Michael? Get a See hold if you us. can. Yeah, get a hold of us and get your ice cubes ready. <laughs> so we've liked Greg Smith for a long time. He's good. Yeah, I kind of like... Ken for a while. I, Ken hasn't said if he's running again for mayor or not. He's very reticent about most things. He's a quiet guy. I'm going to shake, so keep talking. Quiet a second. Just for you, Greg, we're celebrating your uh, running for election, and hopefully... Michael Pertez or Maracas. You know what they say. You're supposed to shake... You're a drink to wake it up, not shake it to put it asleep. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So, Greg, uh, maybe you're welcome to come on the show again and uh, talk about your Maybe campaign. as the election gets uh, closer. Now, um, oh, <clears throat> you oh, heard about... Good, yeah. Ooh, that looks... Well, it looks very similar to the last drink. It's a little redder. You put the Cointreau in, though. I did. I also upped the percentages of uh, extra stuff. Okay. Uh, actually, to fight against the ice melt. Oh. You, know, you always have to fight against ice melt. Mmm. It's good. Mild. You know, it's I'm really not, nice. No, you know, I'm not crazy about sweetie drinks. And no. this is a bit sweeter than I prefer, but it's not bad. I'm glad you mentioned sweetie in this show because uh, we haven't had a show where you haven't denigrated sweet drinks. <laughs> but 
they have so their place. The sweet drinks. Just here. not on my palate. Ah. If I can help it. It's pretty good. And put more here. Let me put more of this in because I don't want more that of that in there. Uh, I actually, could use more gin than anything else. I think. <clears throat> now the kind of the kind of um, martini James Bond likes is a vodka martini, isn't it? It's the Vesper. We had those the other day, a while back. We had we? those on the we show. Had Vespers yeah. recently. Why are you mentioning that? Oh, you just want to mention it. Because there's two kinds of martinis. No, there's... Gin and okay. vodka. Yes. There's, there's a, all the other... There's a million. Actually, the Vesper is both martinis. It's gin and vodka and... Mixed? Uh, yes, and Lillet. It's two ounces of and gin, I'm... one ounce of vodka, and half an ounce of Lillet, which is a French aperitif wine. Yeah, that sounds delicious. It's pretty good. There's also, in the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Vegas, yes. the bar... In the middle of the gambling thing is called Vesper. Vesper. And they make them. And good they're to, pretty good. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you go. Yeah, we've all heard of Dolores Huerta, right? You know who she was. Some teacher. She, she co-founded the um, United Farm Workers with uh, Cesar Chavez. Oh. And <clears throat> they co-founded that together. Yeah, I wasn't born here, so I didn't have to take New Mexico. Well, that was history. in California. Well, <clears throat> how do you know? Oh, you lived in California. I lived in California for a long, long time. And uh, now the, the local charter school, the Dolores Huerta Charter School, uh, has been here for a number of years. Five years they've been here. They've, they've had to be in several locations. Um, they, in fact, they wanted to build a new one in my neighborhood, and I uh, put the kibosh on that. You bastard. Uh, that's right. My neighborhood was not the place for it. They were sort of on Main Street. The building was the really old, big. The old Denison building yeah. was falling down. They couldn't use the second floor because of asbestos problems. They're now in Mesilla uh, Park. In the old school, the old Messia school, and but they may not be there anymore because they've lost their accreditation. I think they had two years of getting rated F in a row. That's not good. And so and I, by, know, I remember they kicked me out of school for that too. Well, sure. Yeah. And so they're out of business by June if they don't get their act together. Well, they have to appeal. They have to appeal it, and and at the same time upgrade their system. The question is. You know, they announced that we're getting rid of park testing, you know, the yes. universal testing. They may have been falling down on park testing. That might have been what did it. Or it also might have been financial affairs because if people are paying to go... Are they using vouchers to go there? I don't know if Provide they about have vouchers. State? I hope not because actually the thing that... The reason we have public schools <clears throat> is to integrate people. Yes. Not to pull them out of the population, but to have them learn how to uh, get, uh, well, set, you know, common I, knowledge. I think they, they think they address uh, special needs for students who may not have those needs addressed in the public schools. Of but public schools are making <clears throat> uh, provisions for people who have special needs to be served. Well, cultural needs is what I'm getting at. Exactly. That too. But they need to be integrated with everybody else. So that's, that's how you, you know, socialize. Well, America kids. is based on assimilation, right? Exactly. We get assimilated. We're the melting pot. You know, when you Jews came over, you know, you wore those, those silly hats and those uh, crazy sideburns. The Teus. Yeah, remember that? The Teus. Teus. Teus is probably somebody who lives here. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, she just won the Congress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I love my Teus. Um, but you assimilate, and, and to assimilate, you can't say, well, we're better than them, so we will just be outside. We don't want to be tainted by others. It's not good to be isolationist. Oh, speaking of others coming in, you heard about this thing down at the border, right? People, they don't want to let people in? No, I hadn't heard. Well, they're, they're keeping people out because they're in trouble in their countries. They They've always out. been keeping people out. And, and you know, they kept uh, many people out, especially the Irish. They didn't do a good job on that, did they? Not really. Tell they, me about they it. They found a way to get in. Yes. They came over on ships, though. They, they did. Sneak across the border. Yeah, that was easy. They could keep them out. But population is going down in America. No, it's not. It, it, well, it's not going down, but the birth rate is lowering. Well, that's good. You know why? Why? It's really hard to get pregnant on your iPhone. <laughs> no, I, I bet they could do it. Oh, yeah, I bet they could. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now, Young Park, and we've all been to Young Park, um, they're going to be draining the pond of theirs. It's a rather large pond. It's a great pond. People um, do go fishing in it. There's, you know, you know, there's fish in it. Yes, well, there's a lot of dead fish in it now. And there's ducks. Now they're going to drain the pond. I hope they don't waste that water. I hope they pump the water out and don't let it just go down the drain. You know what they'll do? They'll pump it into the city sewer system, and then that finally gets into the, the uh, river. river. 
I, well, they should water. The, they should water the park with it. Now, what are, with what the I smell want, of dead fish, it will yes, help fertilize it, it at will. the same time. Now, what are they going to do with all the ducks that are there while the pond is empty? They don't have to do anything with the ducks. Yes. The ducks always find places. That's what ducks are doing. That's There's their home. A, before Young Park, they'll go to some other uh, pond, like the, the Burns University. Lake. Burns Lake. Oh yeah, that pond. Yeah, that's a good pond. Yeah, that's another dry hole. Remember what happened when that dried up? They found a car a, with a body. A in car it. with a woman in it. It yes. went off the interstate. Well, she wasn't a woman anymore. She, she was, was a skeleton. skeleton. Yes. So who knows what riches we will find at the bottom <laughs> Bob, of the young? Yeah. Probably an old Bob, dragon. Bob Dibbins' old dragon. <laughs> He's down there somewhere. So we got to get that back by the time we do the Renaissance Fair next year. There might be baby dragons in there. That would be who really knows? cool. Now Those this weekend, dragons. this weekend coming up, we have the Wasilla Valley Outdoor Expo, which they have every year at the kind of cold for an outdoor expo at the convention center. Oh, it's inside. Yeah. Oh, outdoor is just what they're focusing on. A absolutely. Outdoor activities, recreation. Says lost, get lost indoors. Yeah, absolutely. It's eight dollars to get in. You know, you don't have to tell old guys about getting lost indoors. Uh, I'm often Saturday looking for the map of my house. Yeah. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, this, the, this drink is great. At the convention center. I don't want to make you finish a complete sentence. Oh, I'm in no hurry. Okay. Right, so, um, now also this weekend coming up, Saturday. You must have gone to college with this guy or something. Saturday at the Rio Grande Theater. Yeah. Comedian John the Champ Misquez. What is a champ? A guy that gives half a shampoo? No, that's how he's pronounced champ, I think. Like chicken, yeah. champ, right. Chevrolet. So you... <laughs> I know how to pronounce Chevrolet. Okay. S-H-E-V-R, yes. That's Saturday champ night, 7 o'clock, Rio Grande Theater, $8 to get in. I'll probably so be it's there. A, it's at 8 o'clock and it's $7? No, it's $7. There you go. It's eight dollars and it's seven o'clock to get in. If you see me there, oh, now you mix me up. Come up and say hello. Also coming He's up, the one that looks like him, not me. Now also Don't say hello to me. Coming yes. up at the Rio Grande Theater the following Saturday nights. The begin. This is the very first screening of the new Rio Grande Theater classic film series. They're running a classic film every month, and the very first one is The Godfather Part Two. They've actually been running classic films. I oh, mean, this is a new. This is the new series. Oh, it's a new series. A new series. Oh, well, yes. they've been doing it on a steady basis, so. And this will be January 19th, next Saturday, uh, at 7 o'clock. And every month there will be a new classic film. I'll be introducing some of them. Really? And uh, so. That's almost, we should get. That's uh, why I'm promoting don't it we have a Don't we have a mobile unit where we can videotape mm -hmm. yourself and put you on live? Can we do that, producer? Put him live onto our uh, website? No, but we can't cool. show the movie. No, we don't want to show the movie. It's too long. So come on down. That's January 19th. The Godfather Part 2. One of the greatest sequels ever made. It will be in Italian with uh, English subtitles. Right? Partially. Mm. Partially. Cheers.